Hey, good afternoon, PSP Nation. This is Coach Derek from your PSP Showcase team with all my family and friends and all my baseball players. I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. Um, this Memorial Day weekend, I wanted to take this opportunity to do this segment and talk to you on this segment about Memorial Day. What is it? Why is it? <clears throat> so before I start, many of you may not know, but I'm a veteran myself of the armed forces. So um, I, I'm gonna take the opportunity to talk to you a little bit about Memorial Day and then there's a couple of uh, veterans that are no longer with us that I would like to talk to you about. Um, <clears throat> so as I start, uh, Memorial Day celebrated to honor and remember all the men and women who died fighting for our country. These men and women died and gave their lives so we could be a free nation. Um, with everything going on <clears throat> in today's world, um, we are still a free country. Things would not be free for us if we were in a communist country. So I am thankful that I live in the United States of America, and I hope that you are too. Um, <clears throat> so some people get Memorial Day and Veterans Day confused. I have people come up to me a lot and say, those that know me, thank you for your service. Oh, we want to remember your service. Um, and I say, uh, I'm not dead. And then I take an opportunity to talk to them about the difference. Um, Veterans Day is to celebrate the service and remember the, or, or to honor those men and women that <clears throat> served in uniform. Memorial Day is an opportunity for us to remember the lives that have been lost. So <clears throat> um, as if you got a youngster that's uh, at home and doesn't understand what Memorial Day is, this is a really good segment for them to, to listen to. Um, <clears throat> Memorial Day is celebrated every month, every year on the last Monday of May. Having a day to honor the soldiers who lost their lives started after the Civil War in 1861 to 1865. <clears throat> the original name for Memorial Day was Decoration Day. Decoration Day started May 5th, 1868 by General John A. Logan, commander of the Grand Army of the Republic, head of the Organization of Union Veterans, to honor Union soldiers that died during the Civil War. <clears throat> it was called Decoration Day because the family members took that time to go out and decorate the, the graves of the fallen soldiers with flowers. Um, <clears throat> the first service to honor fallen soldiers at Arlington National Cemetery was held on May 30th, 1868. President Ulysses S. Grant was present at the ceremony and General James Garfield gave the first speech. Decoration Day originally only honored the soldiers that died during Civil War, but after World War I, um, <clears throat> that was changed to all soldiers that lost their lives in war. So um, on May 11th, 1950, Decoration Day was changed to Memorial Day. So it's been Memorial Day, it's been called Memorial Day for 70 years. So um, <clears throat> President Nixon, declared Memorial Day a federal holiday in 1971. That was even before I was born. I was born in 73. So um, it, it's been around for a while uh, as a federal holiday. <clears throat> in 1966, Congress, along with President Lund Lyndon Johnson, declared Waterloo, New York, the birthplace of Memorial Day. The uh, official flower for Memorial Day, um, <clears throat> and if you go to a, a cemetery and you see red poppies, um, that's probably a, a, a headstone or a gravesite of, uh, of a fallen soldier. So um, it's, it's, it's beautiful to see if you haven't been able to see it. Um, people celebrate Memorial Day by placing flowers on, on the graves, but they also uh, fly the flags at half staff and <clears throat> they attend parades uh, and, and they remember soldiers who lost their lives. Um, and you'll often see also in cemeteries with the little flags. So um, <clears throat> schools, post office, banks, other businesses are typically closed on Memorial Day. Um, Memorial Day is kind of like that unofficial start to summer, um, unless you're in Washington, because then our summer doesn't start till a little bit later. But, um, <clears throat> but uh, it, it's kind of like when people have Memorial Day, they, they see the school year is coming to an end and summer vacation is going to start and such. So. Um, <clears throat> but now I wanted to take a chance to talk to you about a couple of veterans. This first one, um, th this is a special memory of mine. 
Uh, if you notice, I'm wearing a number 40 Arizona Cardinals jersey, but this is a number 40 Pat Tillman jersey. Um, <clears throat> Pat Tillman was uh, a NFL football player, if you don't know, that left the NFL while he was in the peak of his career to join and join the Army. And <clears throat> he joined post 9-11. Um, he had a famous interview about talking about doing his part and what's he doing, you know. Um, <clears throat> his final year in the NFL was the 2001 NFL season. Uh, <clears throat> Pat enlisted in the Army in May of uh, 2002. And <clears throat> I had the, the, the opportunity to, to meet this extraordinary young man uh, through a friend. Uh, <clears throat> I was in the military at the time and considerably higher ranking than he, he was. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, I had prepared and I, I grabbed a football card. I was going to get his autograph and talk to him about the NFL and all this. I was super excited to talk to this guy about football. I couldn't bring myself to ask him for an autograph. So once I start, once I met him and started talking to him, just such a humble guy and just a great guy, like loved America. Like, like he, you, he's the guy you could see running down the street with a flag in his hand. Um, <clears throat> Pat was just an extraordinary, extraordinary guy. Like he's a little bit younger than me. So um, we were sitting there talking and we were sitting there talking about California and his life living, growing up in the San Jose area and, and um, <clears throat> playing high school ball in Central Coast and all that. And um, <clears throat> he was uh, probably the, out of everybody, all the celebrities and, and athletes I've met, he's probably the one that made the biggest impact on me um, because he made me realize that, that what you do in life is more valuable than how much you make it. So um, just a little background on Pat. Um, he attended Leland High School there in California, but he, he, he got a full ride scholarship to Arizona State as a linebacker. In 1997, he won the Pac-10, before it was Pac-12, the Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year Award. He was drafted in 1998 by the Arizona Cardinals. <clears throat> and this is something that's, that, that like, is super extraordinary to me. He turned down, he was under contract in 2001 when he left in, in May of 2002, he, he turned down a $3.6 million contract to enlist in the army and be paid as an E4. Okay. And if you know what the pay scale is in the military, an E4 makes a couple thousand dollars a month. I'm pretty sure Pat Tillman made that in like two quarters of football as a, a professional athlete. Um, <clears throat> but there was a lot of controversy surrounding him after he gave his life. Um, you know, Pat did uh, several tours. He did many tours, Iraq and Afghanistan, and he ultimately lost his life on April 22nd, 2004 in Afghanistan. Um, <clears throat> but ultimately, if, if you had a chance to talk to this guy, he didn't, he didn't embellish on himself. He didn't, he didn't want to blow himself up. He, he, I don't think I don't even think he mentioned uh, anything. He never mentioned anything about the NFL. Um, we talked about life and we talked about military stuff. And <clears throat> you know, I had 15 minutes, and in 15 minutes, that guy made an impact on me. And I was I was way higher ranking than he was. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, if you're if you're a parent to to a young person, um, you know. I encourage them to to know who Pat Tillman was. Um, his his legacy is should never be forgotten. A guy that walked away at the pinnacle of his career to serve his country, to to protect our freedoms. And the controversy surrounding his death, originally when he was killed in Afghanistan, it came back that it was it, it was uh, an enemy engagement. Then it came back later that he was. It was friendly fire. <clears throat> Ultimately, the guy gave his life. He would not have been there had he not just walked away from the NFL <clears throat> to serve our country. Okay, so if if you're a person that sits there and wants to trash on politicians and you're, you're you you want to trash on the the country and what it doesn't do, I'm just going to tell you this guy. He didn't trash on the country. He gave up 
millions to go make pennies on the thousands of dollars to serve us. So I had a great appreciation for him. Um, I, I was at a loss when I found out uh, I was on duty when I found out he died and he'd given his life. And <clears throat> I was just like, whoa, man. But it also brought to, to the reality of what the sacrifice is for all men and women that have given their lives. <clears throat> so this next person I'm gonna talk to you about, um, I'm gonna share a screen here. Um, let's see here. There we go. So <clears throat> this, I'm gonna be reading this because I, I, when I ran across this gentleman's story, I think that many people need to hear it and see it. So um, this is John Robert Fox, okay? He's an American soldier who was killed in action when he deliberately called an artillery fire on his own position after his position was overrun. By sacrificing himself, he succeeded in defending a German attack in Northern Italy during World War II. He was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor in 1997 for willingly sacrificing his life. Fox was born in Cincinnati, Ohio on May 18, 1915, and attended Wilberforce University, participating in ROTC under Aaron R. Fisher, and graduating with a commission as a second lieutenant in 1940. <clears throat> he was just 29 years old <clears throat> when he called artillery fire on his position the day after Christmas in 1944, for which he was first a was first posthumously awarded the Distinguished Service Cross in 1982. It was more than 50 years after his death before Fox was finally awarded his Medal of Honor. After being repatriated, repatriated his body was buried in Colebrook Cemetery in Whitman, Massachusetts. In the early 1990s, it was <clears throat> determined that during and immediately after World War II, African-American soldiers had been denied consideration for Medal of Honor solely because of their race. Seven African-American soldiers had their medals upgraded in January of 1997 to the Medal of Honor. First Lieutenant Fox was one of them. The, ninth, the 92nd Infantry Division, colored, also known as the Buffalo Soldiers, was a segregated African-American division that fought <clears throat> on the Italian front during World War II, First Lieutenant John R. Fox was assigned to the 366th Infantry Regiment. In December 1944, American troops had been forced to withdraw from an Italian village, <clears throat> from an Italian village when the Germans overran them. Fox volunteered to stay behind as part of the small forward observer party. From his position on the second floor of a house, Fox directed the defensive artillery fire. The Germans were in the open in the streets and attacking in strength, vastly outnumbering the small group of American soldiers. Lieutenant Fox ra radioed <clears throat> in to have the artillery fire adjusted closer to his position, then radioed again to have the shelling move even closer. The soldier receiving the, metal, me the, soldier receiving the message was stunned since that would bring the deadly artillery fire right up on top of Lieutenant Fox's position. He would surely be killed. When Fox was told this, he replied, fire it. I can hear that. I can hear that. The last round was just where I wanted it, the young lieutenant reported. Bring it 60 yards more. So Fox reported the last round was just where I wanted it. Bring it 60 yards more. The receiving operator thought Fox was mistaken. The order would train <clears throat> the would train the full fire of up to 75 heavy caliber artillery guns directly in Fox's position. Fox confirmed the order. There's more of them than there is of us. Seconds later, the bombardment began and within minutes, hundreds of shells had hit the target. Each one powerful enough to blast the house and its occupants into oblivion. In the end, the artillery strikes forced the Germans to delay their advance through the town. This gave the American soldiers time to reorganize and launch a counterattack, which allowed them to retake the town from German, German control. When the soldiers went to recover the body of Lieutenant Fox <clears throat> and the eight Italian soldiers who had been killed as well, they also found the bodies of about 100 German soldiers around the wreckage. 
Okay, so this is the citation on his Medal of Honor. For his gallant and courageous actions at the supreme sacrifice of his own life, Fox was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor. His widow, the former Ar Arlene Morrow of Brockton, Massachusetts, received his medal from President Bill Clinton in the White House ceremony on January 13, 1997. On that day, Clinton also awarded the medal of six other previously neglected African-American World War II veterans, including Vernon Baker, who was the only one living when awarded. So I'm gonna to read to you uh, his award. For extraordinary heroism <clears throat> against an armed enemy in the vicinity of Somo Colonia, hope I said that right, Italy, on 26 December 1944, while serving as a member of Cannon Company, 366 Infantry Regiment, 92nd Infantry Division. During the preceding few weeks, Lieutenant Fox served with the 598th Field Artillery Battalion as a forward observer. On Christmas night, enemy soldiers gradually infiltrated the town of Samacolonia in civilian clothes, and by early morning, the town was largely in hostile hands. Commencing with a heavy barrage of en enemy artillery at 0400 hours on 26 December 1944, an organized attack by uniformed Germans units began. Being <clears throat> greatly outnumbered, most of the United States infantry forces were forced to withdraw from the town, but Lieutenant Fox and some other members of the observer party voluntarily remained on the second floor of the house to direct defensive art artillery. <clears throat> At 0800 hours, Lieutenant Fox reported that the Germans were in the streets and attacking in strength. He then called for defensive artillery fire to slow the enemy advance. As the Germans continued to press the attacks forward, the area that Lieutenant Fox occupied, <clears throat> he adjusted the artillery fire closer to his position. Finally, he was warned that the next adjustment would bring the deadly artillery right on top of his position. After acknowledging the danger, Lieutenant Fox insisted that the last adjustment be fired as this was the only way to defeat the attacking soldiers. Later, when a counterattack retook the position from the Germans, Lieutenant Fox's body was found with the bodies of approximately 100 German soldiers. Lieutenant Fox's gallant and courageous actions at the supreme sacrifice of his own life contributed greatly to delaying the enemy advance until other infantry and artillery units could reorganize to repel the attack. His extraordinary valorous actions were in keeping with the most cherished traditions of the military service and reflect the utmost credit on him, his unit, and the United States Army. So, <clears throat> again, Lieutenant Fox, John Robert Fox, um, gave the ultimate sacrifice of giving his life and doing so, so the, the rest of his unit could survive. Um, and his life ultimately was sacrificed so um, they could regain a town during a war. Um, so extraordinary measure. But this Memorial Day, I want you to pause for a second and be thankful for the men and women we have serving and those that have given their lives because we have lost way too many to war. Um, I have known too many people that we have lost due to fighting in a conflict with a foreign country and whether it's trying to enforce our beliefs on them or they're trying to enforce their beliefs on another country and we're allied support or well, however that dynamic is sliced as a pie. We do not need war. We don't need it. <clears throat> but we don't need to forget either because all of those people that have family members that gave their ultimate sacrifice have paid that price too. When you lose a loved one, it's hard enough. But when you lose a loved one in war, you don't know when they're coming home and then you have somebody show up on your doorstep to tell you that they're not coming home. Um, I can tell you that that's the worst duty to ever give to a family. So this Memorial Day, I hope you all have time to peaceful time with your families and you have time to sit and reflect and be gra gracious and gra grateful for all the freedoms that we have here in this, this country due to the 
all the many lives that have been given to protect it. I wish you all a good, great week and a great rest of your Memorial Day. God bless.